Um, please feel free to continue eating. Both the meals and your dessert. Uh, but at this time, I want to introduce our program. Uh, we're going to begin with our mayor, Mick Cornett. Mick Cornett became Oklahoma City's 35th mayor on March 2nd, 2004. And I believe everyone in this room would agree that he's really leading our city with a vision for the future and a passion for making this a better community and a healthier place for all our citizens. Mayor Cornett is going to go into detail today about the proposed recreational fitness projects and maps. And he's also going to discuss the modern rail transit portion of the district. Following the mayor's presentation, we will hear from Mayor Patrick Hayes, the mayor of North Little Rock, Arkansas, who will share his city's experience with implementing senior wellness centers in their community. So please help me welcome our mayor, Mayor Vic Clement. Thank you very much. Uh, please continue to eat if, uh, if you are still doing so. And, Despite the fact you're all on a diet, I want you to enjoy that dessert. I, uh, I always think your day should get better as soon as it starts. And I started my day in the dentist chair just to ensure that today my day could only get better from here on out. And it certainly has. I am uh, thrilled today to welcome in one of my mayoral friends, Pat Hayes, uh, from, from North Little Rock, Arkansas. Pat, so we've been to Dallas today, in fact. He's flown to Dallas, he's flown in here, he'll be flying out shortly. He and I are going to go take a look at the memorial uh, uh, when this luncheon is done. And, uh, and uh, we'll be introducing Pat here in a moment, but I want to start up front by thanking him for, for uh, being a part of our Oklahoma City community for a day. Um, the MAPS campaign uh, has been uh, going full speed now for several weeks, and it is ever intensifying. And, uh, hardly a, an hour goes by when someone doesn't say, with some level of anxiety, when are we going to see the TV commercials? Very, very soon. Uh, you'll, you'll be seeing them before this week is out, and you'll be very tired of them by the time uh, the campaign actually gets here. But we are very close to Election Day. Three weeks from tomorrow is December 8th. And uh, the day that uh, really the council and I have been working on for nearly three years uh, in putting this package of initiatives together with the understanding that this is the, the best vision, the best blueprint for this city to continue with the role of creating jobs and creating a city where people want to live, so improving the quality of life. The elements I want to speak on with a little more depth today than I've been able to in our previous breaking through lunches have to do more with the health relationship and the idea that this could be a community that is more pedestrian friendly than we've been in the past. And a lot of this plays into our city's history. Like a lot of western cities in the 1940s and 50s, we really started to develop a culture that revolved around the automobile. And as a result, this city it, 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 uh, really more than many, just continued to extend itself, and the outer rain kept getting larger and larger and larger. And the idea that we could actually live in this city and actually not own a car really disappeared somewhere along the timeline. We have developed a city where you very much need to own a car, and we built the city with our shopping centers and our drive-through restaurants and our schools and our libraries out in the suburban areas, really with the mindset that everyone who was going to visit these public amenities was going to own a car, and we kind of designed the city in that manner. What we're trying to do now is try to go back and, 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 and fix some of those design uh, inadequacies. We really feel like the the idea that we have revolved our lives around the car has really now played in the ever-rising obesity issue that we face and a lot of other health situations that we face. We know in the future that the price of gasoline is likely to rise. We know that our traffic congestion is likely to increase. And if you look demographically, you can see that as a community, we are going to get older. And so with that far thinking in mind, the council and I came up with this list of proposals, and some of which we're going to highlight today, that take all of those considerations, uh, or take all of those um, uh, elements into consideration. I will uh, start by talking about um, the downtown streetcar. It is one of the three higher profile elements of the MAPS 3 initiative. The others, and I won't go into them, but just so you'll be more clear with what, what, what MAPS is about in general to refresh your memory, the convention center, the park, and the downtown streetcar are the three highest profile, highest costing elements of the MAPS 3 initiative. Now, the downtown streetcar is really part of a larger vision. 
we can all envision a day when Oklahoma City, because we'll have the, the increased traffic, the most likely the increased gas prices, most likely the, the aging community that is, is going to rely more on public transit. We can all foresee a day in Oklahoma City when it's going to make sense to have commuter rail lines between Norman and Edmond connecting to downtown Oklahoma City. We might be also able to, to predict that we'll have lines coming in from Tinker to the east and, and perhaps to our suburban neighbors off to the west side. And then, in maybe a much more futuristic day, we can talk about high-speed rail and the idea of connecting the metropolitan area of Dallas and uh, perhaps the city of Tulsa or perhaps Little Rock with, with Oklahoma City. And you start to see that in the future, we could have a, a, a number of rail opportunities to bring people in to downtown Oklahoma City. But you've got to remember up front that once they've arrived there with all these forms of transportation, they've arrived without a car. And we've got to have a way to move these people around. And so it seemed to us the most measured, the most strategic, the best place for us to start on a futuristic rail initiative is with the downtown streetcar. And so we have designed a system that we think should be able to allow us to build five to six miles of a downtown streetcar system that would be that will allow us to get our visitors with our attractions to our, our workers, uh, to their places of employment, and certainly the people who have chosen to live downtown to be able to circulate throughout the downtown area without the feeling that they had to own a car. So this is a very measured first step, but I will say it's a very impressive system that we have designed. In fact, if you look today at the, the number of cities that already have downtown streetcars, we would have the largest system in the United States. We will also uh, be, be uh, looking to locate and build in some sort of a phase one model of a transit hub so that in the future, when we start to combine all of our public transit elements together, whether you're talking about uh, bus rapid transit uh, or commuter rail or high-speed rail or expanding our current bus system, all of these modes need to go into one central location so you can as seamlessly as possible traverse throughout the city, move from one mode to another. And we need to, to locate that facility. Now, I think it's fairly clear that it's probably going to be somewhere along that north-south uh, line of the Santa Fe Depot. And largely, remember, the Amtrak is already coming into that location. It's also close by the Bricktown. It's close to the Central Business District. But we need a little more study to determine the exact location. But I think it's clear to most of us who are looking at it from a, from a big picture perspective that that's likely to be where this multimodal hub uh, begins. Getting back to the downtown streetcar, when we went through the fixed guideway study three years ago to kind of design a blueprint for Oklahoma City's future transit needs, we designed the streetcar to be a loop. In other words, it would just kind of be one big circle around sort of the core of the city. And the more we thought about it and the more experts we brought into the conversation, we realized that that was a mistake because what we realized is if we build a loop, what we're really building is a ride. That we're really bringing something in, you get on, you ride around, and you get off again, and you think, well, that was fun. You know, we got to do that a lot of time. And you know what, that's not the purpose of transit. I mean, transit is to get you to specific places. And so the, the alignment we currently have in mind is more of a spoke and hub type facility. In other words, you, you have a facility at this multimodal hub, and then the downtown streetcar would go out from there and then back in from there. And of course, in the future, those could be extended as, as the private sector or, or businesses or development uh, occurred in the future, whereas you really couldn't extend a loop. Uh, you, you would have pretty much closed it off. And so I think it gives us room to grow. And again, it's a wonderful place for us to get started as a very measured first step in a 21st century uh, multimodal uh, uh, transit system for Oklahoma City. Now, switching to another form of transit in a way is our expansion of our bicycle trail master plan. Uh, for many, many years, we've been kind of picking away at designing more and more bicycle trails throughout the city. I'm sure most of you have seen these. We recently connected Lake Hefner with Lake Holmer-Holser. We just most recently opened up the Katy Trail in northeast Oklahoma City. And we're really proud of the, the bicycle trail system that we put together. But we have much more planned. And um, at a council workshop about a year and a half ago, it, it kind of dawned on some of us that at the current rate we were going, we were going to complete that bicycle trail long after every one of us was gone. 
that we just weren't moving along a fast enough pace to keep up with the demands of the bicyclers and also what this city is going to desire. And people are more and more wanting to get out on their bicycles. Maybe they don't go to work on their bicycle. Maybe it's just exercise. But regardless, we need to have a more expansive bicycle trail system throughout the city of Oklahoma City. And having a plan is wonderful, but executing the plan was where we were falling short. And so we decided to go ahead and plug in and finish the entire bicycle trail master plan with the MAPS initiative. So over 50 more miles of bicycle trails would be completed uh, in the next few years as a result of MAPS. And it would pretty much complete the bicycle trail master plan. And when you add that to the plans that the other suburban communities are putting in, you see a, a, a complete bicycle trail of over 200 miles of interconnecting bicycles, and you literally can traverse throughout this entire uh, region uh, on a bicycle or rollerblades if you're, if you're more adventurous. Um, we also looked at the city with fresh eyes and realized we had made a mistake in not uh, constructing enough sidewalks in the suburban areas. And it was, it was most evident when you looked at some of the public buildings that we've constructed and really giving you no way to get to them except drive. And I'm talking about schools and libraries mostly, but other public buildings as well. We have these public buildings and we have neighborhoods, but we didn't connect the neighborhoods with the public buildings except with streets. And for a relatively small amount of money by MAPS standards, we can build sidewalks and go back into these areas and, and try to recreate a more pedestrian-friendly community. If, if parents choose to allow or encourage their kids to walk to school, they would have a much better, uh, higher likelihood that they'll be able to, to do so. Uh, and, and secondly, it, it just makes no sense to, to build libraries in a suburban area next to neighborhoods and not create sidewalks necessary to get people in and out of neighborhoods through these public buildings. And so this will allow us to build 75 miles of sidewalks. And just like the bicycle trails, these will be throughout the city. And so a lot of people think MAPS has just been about downtown, and this one is largely about downtown. Uh, the elements that we're talking about today typically are not downtown related. The bicycle trails are not, certainly the transit is, but the bicycle trails are not and the sidewalks are not. And neither are the senior centers. Uh, the senior centers is, is, a, is a step in the right direction for us as a community for several reasons. First of all, we have health issues, and I think that's been well documented, uh, certainly in the state, but in Oklahoma City as well. Uh, we are one of the uh, uh, cities in the country that has significant obesity issues. We also know that in the next 20 years, the number of senior citizens living in Oklahoma City is going to double. And this city has done an excellent job in the past of planning for the future. And building these senior centers now, at least starting the funding so we can build them in the near future, will allow us to properly plan for these demographic shifts. It also sends a very clear and visual message to this community that we prioritize our health. And uh, we're going to hear uh, more on the health centers in just a few moments from uh, from Patrick Hayes, and we, we asked Mayor Hayes to uh, fly in today from the Little Rock area because, uh, first of all, Pat Hayes is a visionary. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't get elected and then re-elected and then re-elected and then re-elected and then re-elected re unless you're doing something right. And Pat Hayes has been the mayor of North Little Rock, Arkansas for 21 years. Uh, that's right. That, that, that's, imagine Ron Norick still standing here. That's, <laughs> that's what that would be like. Uh, I mean, this guy, this guy is a game changer. And one of the things that Pat Hayes has done for his community was encourage the construction of a senior center. And he will tell the story from there, and the lives that have been changed, the expansions that have been necessary. But it has literally changed the life of his community. And he's not the only mayor, not the only city that's out building these senior centers, but the story is nearly universal, that these things are changing the health of so many citizens in their communities that people are looking at each other and thinking, why didn't we do this earlier? Um, Pat Hayes is on the Board of Trustees of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen him miss a U.S. conference meeting, but I can tell you this, in June, he's going to get to drive for the very first time because the Conference of Mayors will be right here in Oklahoma City. So please, let's show an Oklahoma City welcome to the mayor of North Little Rock, Arkansas. 